All right, what's up guys? This is Ryan with Elevate Security. And now in this video, as promised, we're going to be delving into the SMB protocol. Now, before we get started here, I would just mention that if this were to be a Windows box, then I would definitely be thinking a possible RCE, but I would need further enumeration into what uh, version of Windows this is. Is it an up-to-date version? Is it like, a, say, Windows Server 2016 or something like that? Or is it something older? Maybe it's um, something like uh, Windows 2008 Server or uh, 2003 Windows XP, something like that. Uh, even Windows 7, uh, believe it or not, with the Eternal Blue exploit, which I believe we have exploited on here through the, the HTB, uh, the Hack the Box um, box called Blue, where it uh, had SMB running. It was vulnerable to uh, the Eternal Blue exploit on Windows 7 Service Pack 1, and we were able to use Metasploit to auto pwn it. Um, I don't know if we, I don't think I showcased it, but you could also go to Search Sploit and do it the non Metasploit way, get a shell. But here we have a whole, something a little bit different, a whole different beast, really. Well, not, not entirely different, but a bit different. Because this is a Linux server, right? Now, Linux can run SMB. When it does, it's what we would call a Samba server. Uh, so it's here it's using that uh, SMB uh, Samba server in order to serve up files. So think about SMB as a uh, kind of like NFS almost. It's a, it's a file share. So it's basically used to host files and share them and stuff like that, kind of similar to how you would use NFS. Now, um, another thing, other than just pure RCE, whether it's Windows or Linux, because these are file shares that we're talking about, it's also very useful to be able to further enumerate, to get more information on the system. Say there's some write access, then you can maybe upload files onto that share and go from there. Maybe you can pull files from that, kind of like FTP, you know? If you have access to the files that are being served up on that, potentially, right? So it depends if they have that secured, if they have that locked down, or if it's just allowing anonymous login and anyone can go there and, and do stuff. So that's the first thing that we're gonna look for here. What level of access do we have to this Samba service here? So it's running on port 445, which is the standard. Now, let's just go ahead and uh, oops, let's just go ahead and go over to this other tab here. So, how I'm going to start off with this is I'm going to use a utility called SMB Client, and I'll just showcase that really quick here. It's an FTP-like client to access SMB SIFS resources on servers. So basically, you know, I was mentioning a second ago just the SMB kind of aspect of this. This is kind of how this protocol will function. It's going to serve up files, allow you to, well, depending on your level of permission, to grab files from the server, put files on the server, stuff like that. So that's exactly what we're going to be trying to do. But first, let's just see, do we have access to this thing? and What's available, right? We want to know what is actually available to us. So we're going to do SMB client L for list, and then we're going to give it our double whack and then the IP address of our target. So we're going to try the anonymous login first because let's say we don't know, we have no clue what the password might be. We just hit enter. And in this case, we were successful with an anonymous login. So that makes things a bit simpler. We don't have to look for credentials and stuff like that. So normally you see this IPC dollar sign, admin dollar sign, print dollar sign, but it looks like these ones here are a little bit non-standard as far as what we have uh, potentially access to. So the next thing I will do is I will do it without any flags and I'll put slash temp. See if we can access the temp directory anonymously. And yeah, it looks like we can. So we are, we are here now. Another thing we can do is we can use a little bit of Metasploit to help us out. And, and there's probably, I'm sure there's manual way to do this as well, but I didn't look into that. So 
I'm pretty sure, or actually I know that there is an auxiliary module that will allow us to um, do Samba Simlink traversal and actually um, mount uh, the file system there and allow us to access files on the underlying operating system. Now, the reason that we're able to do this in this case is it's a misconfiguration with Samba. So in this case, uh, this Samba server is configured with a writable share and wide links enabled um, by default. So it basically allows us to backdoor this essentially. So if I, let me just pull up the info on this so we can, um, before I run it, that way you guys can understand what's, what's happening here a little bit better. So this is the module here, the auxiliary module. And it says that this module exploits a directory traversal flaw in the Samba SIF server. To exploit this flaw, a writable share must be specified, which uh, we have a writable share here with our uh, the slash temp. And uh, the newly created directory will link to the root file system. So if we are able to link uh, the root file system onto that, then we'll be able to access any of the files on the system. So. Yeah, it sounds pretty nifty to me, so let's just go ahead and pull that off. So we're going to use this, and then let's see what we need here. Let's set our hosts to our target, and we're using port 445, or they are, I should say, for SMB. And the share, name of writable share, I think this is where temp would come into place, yeah. So let's set SMB share to, um, yeah, just temp. And so now when we run this module, it says she was trying to mount writable share temp, trying to link RFS and so it should be accessible slash temp and then slash root FS. So let's just go ahead and see if that is accessible to us. And it looks like it is. So now we've mounted the underlying <laughs> operating system onto slash temp root FS. And as you see here, um, we are able to access this info. Let me just full screen this so you can see a little bit better. So yeah, this is the from the root file system. So if we wanted to look at say Etsy, um, Oh, whoops, just CD Etsy. Um, um, what is it, more? I think it's more. Boom. So we can see, uh, <laughs> we can we can read off the uh, entire Etsy password file. I wonder, what about Etsy Shadow? Can we, maybe not. Is Cat on here? Cat, can I cat it? Okay, maybe, okay, yeah, cat command is not on here, but uh, let's see, so pretty much any of the files on this uh, file system we're able to read. I think we can go into, go back one, mm, root, what's in the root directory? SSH and yeah so we can we can get the keys here too we can get like the SSH keys um, oops we can get the uh, oh, not cat but uh but more so yeah we can we can grab their SSH keys so we can backdoor our own access to the server and we can get in uh, through SSH or however we want to pull it off. It's really up to us. We've <laughs> mounted the entire file system at this point. So yeah, this is how you can exploit SMB in this case. And if you want to see how you can exploit SMB uh, to sort of auto pwn it, get a shell or what have you, then you can check out my other video on uh, Blue, which was uh, exploiting the eternal Blue vulnerability in SMB on a Windows 7 machine. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys gained value from that. And yeah, we'll just keep rattling through these. Uh, let me know if there's any questions or comments down in the section below, and I'll see you in the next video.